So far in these videos, we haven't really given a good answer to the question of how does an agent actually make a decision. So that's the issue that we're going to start digging into. And this is, this is the area of agent architectures. When we talk about an agent architecture, what we're talking about is a software design for an agent. It's a, a software architecture which is intended to support decision making uh, with the properties that we've been talking about pre previously, that is to say reactive, proactive, autonomous behaviour. So we've already seen, in fact, a uh, kind of high-level decomposition, a kind of high-level agent architecture, where we decompose an agent into perception, state, decision, and action subsystems. So the perception subsystem responsible for getting information from the environment. The state subsystem responsible for recording that information, deciding what to remember uh, uh, about the environment. The decision-making subsystem, responsible for actually making the decision about what action to perform. And then finally, the action subsystem, performing the action at the interface between the agent and the environment. Um, so what we're going to see now is we're going to dig a little bit deeper, and what we're going to focus on is these systems here. The state, the decision, uh, and to a certain extent, the action subsystems. So, here's a couple of definitions of what an agent architecture is. This one is from Patty Mars, 1991. An agent architecture is a particular methodology for building agents. It specifies how the agent can be decomposed into a set of component modules and how these modules should be made to interact. The total set of modules and their interactions has to provide an answer to the question of how sensor data and current internal state determine the actions and future internal state of the agent. An architecture encompasses techniques and algorithms that support this methodology. So another definition from Leslie Kelbling in the same year, an agent architecture is a specific collection of software or hardware modules, typically designated by boxes with arrows indicating data and control flow among the modules. A more abstract view of an architecture is as a general methodology for designing particular modular decompositions for particular tasks. So, as we will see in the videos that follow, there are a number of different approaches to building agents, a number of different classes of agent architectures. Uh, and we are going to focus on three, or in fact we're going to focus on four, but one of them is a kind of subclass of the first one. So the first one that we're going to look at, which dominated in the early days of AI, right through to, uh, well, right through to the present day, is the idea of symbolic reasoning agents. And as we will see, the idea of symbolic reasoning agents is the idea of building agents that have symbolic and typically logical representations of their environment, and that decide what to do via something like logical reasoning. And as I say, we're going to look at a variant of these symbolic reasoning uh, agents that we will call practical reasoning agents. Um, the problems with these kinds of architectures, which we'll talk about later, led in the mid-1980s to a number of researchers to kind of reject these approaches and look instead at what are called reactive or behavioural architectures. Uh, where the agent is more like responding to its environment rather than explicitly reasoning about it. But then around about 1990, some researchers said, well, let's try and marry the best of these kind of symbolic and reactive architectures, uh, and uh, they developed what we'll call hybrid agent architectures. But the first one that we're going to look at in the rest of this video, what we're going to talk about is symbolic reasoning architectures. So how do you identify a symbolic reasoning architecture when you see one? Well, you look for two key things. The first thing that you look for is a data structure, an explicit data structure within the agent which contains a symbolic representation of the agent's environment. It's very natural if you're going to build an agent, let's say a robot, to inhabit a particular environment like this office where I'm filming this video, the real world environment of my office, uh, that the way to build that robot is to give it some explicit representation of its environment. That is, to give it a model of the environment in, in which it's operating. And the first key idea of these symbolic reasoning agents is that that model is a symbolic one, and in its purest expression, it is a logical one. Now, I realise that sounds a bit abstract, but I'm going to come back and explain that in a little bit more detail. 
The second key property of a symbolic reasoning architecture or a deductive architecture is that decision making about what action to perform is made via manipulating symbols, which I again sound, I realize sounds a little bit abstract. Uh, in its purest expression, it says that the decision making is done via logical reasoning. And we'll come back later and explain what that means in a little bit more detail. I do realize it sounds a bit abstract for now. Well, let's just see a picture of uh, uh, what such a symbolic representation might look like. This is a rather hackneyed AI uh, example known as the blocks world. So in the blocks world is over here. This is a picture of the environment. We've got a table in this environment and we've got three blocks named A, B and C. Uh, and these blocks can just be configured to be on top of one another or on the table. So here we've got block B is on top of block A, and block A is on the table, and block C is on the table. And that's just the configuration. So over here we've got our agent, and it's got some perceptual subsystem. It's, got some inf it's getting information about that environment. Let's say it's a video camera that's delivering digital video frames as its perceptual data. But then here is our explicit symbolic representation. And here, in fact, this representation uh, is one that uses logic. I mean, it doesn't look like logic, but that's what it is. These are, in fact, predicates of first-order logic. So this first predicate says that block A is on top of uh, block B is on top of block A. So on B A means that block B is on top of block A. On A table means that block A is on the table. Clear B means there's nothing on top of block B. Okay, so on B A. B is on top of A, on A table, A is on the table, clear B, there's nothing on top of block B, on C table, C is on the table, and clear C, there's nothing on top of C. So this is a logical representation which captures pretty much completely this admittedly very simple and somewhat artificial uh, environment. It's completely describing this environment and it's doing it in uh, a logical way. This is a symbolic, logical representation of this environment. So here there's a data structure within the agent which contains an explicit, symbolic, in fact logical representation of this environment. Well, suppose we want to build this robot, what kinds of problems do we face? Well, the first one is how do you go from this to this? That is, how do you translate this real world environment into this internal symbolic representation of it. And that's what's called the transduction problem. Transduction just means to translate something from one form to another. So here the transduction problem is how do you translate the real world, the environment, into the symbolic representation of it. And then the second problem is the representation and reasoning problem. So if we go back to our example, here the environment is very, very simple. Okay, it's a very, very simple environment, which can be pretty much completely captured by simple facts that look like this. But imagine an agent that's got to inhabit an environment like Times Square in New York or Piccadilly Circus in London. Incredibly dynamic environments with hundreds of people running around, processors continually changing the environment in ways beyond our agent's uh, understanding. How do you capture the properties of those kind of environments using these kinds of logical representations? Well, the answer is it's not easy, and it's spawned a huge amount of research uh, uh, into exactly that issue, and that research area is known as knowledge representation. So those are the two key problems, transduction and representation and reasoning. Transduction, how do you translate the world, the environment, into a symbolic representation of it? And the representation and reasoning problem, how do you manipulate and uh, decide what to do with those representations? How do you capture, using those representations, highly dynamic, complex environments? So most researchers would accept that for real-world robotics type applications, neither of those problems is anywhere near solved. And there is one fundamental problem that keeps coming back to haunt us, and that problem is computational complexity. Reasoning with those representations is computationally very, very complex. And because of these problems, as I said earlier, a number of researchers rejected this whole kind of line of attack and looked to alternative kinds of architectures. But nevertheless, it's useful uh, to look at this approach and that's what we're going to do in uh, the videos that follow.